Our next guest says we are in the midst of the most pronounced biotech rally in over five years, but he also says it's not too late to still get in on the trade. Joining me now is Jared Holtz, health care equity analyst over at Mizuho Securities. Jared, uh, thank you very much for being here with us right now. The biotech sector maybe was due for at least a little bit of a bounce. It's been such a terrible few years uh, since COVID. But take us through what's been driving it and why there is still more upside in just certain parts of the market. Hey, Don, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, looking back on the past few years, it's been, you know, a very challenging backdrop for biotech. This has been one of the worst spaces in really all of the equity market um, since mid-2021. Like, we've barely seen, you know, any positive activity for any pronounced period of time until very recently. Um, and I think for that reason, we're finally getting uh, this index flat over a multi-year period, whereas so many other areas in the market, obviously including the S&P, have done far better. Uh, I think when you consider the risk factors that we've spoken about before with respect to drug pricing and other elements of, of the business, the amount of companies that comprise the index being um, very plentiful, perhaps too plentiful, I think all these risk factors are just much more well understood and we can continue to kind of move higher from here. Okay, so now that the uh, perhaps context around COVID, which was kind of behind that surge from 2020 to 2021 is, is done, we are now left digesting GLP-1s and the new trends there and the skyrocketing valuations we've seen for companies like Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. If you didn't mm -hmm. get in there, where can you still get in? Well, I'm not even sure it's too late to get in, into those, just given the excitement um, and, and the appetite that investors have for this one area. There are a bunch of small cap um, biotech stocks that also have, albeit, you know, they have drugs in the GLP-1 category, albeit much earlier, uh, Wave Life Sciences, WVE, Turns Pharma, TERN. There are other ways to play obesity. And yes, we've seen this category explode uh, you know, the combined value for these obesity drugs, if you add Novo plus Lilly, is probably north of a trillion dollars. So there, there's definitely, you know, room for more players here. I think it's just going to come down to the investment needed to move the drugs through and then how they're going to eventually compete with the two large cap pharma players. And just, the you know, looking at manufacturing alone and going to market, very expensive. But there are other you know, ways to play the group. Um, those are two right off the bat, but there are many others. All right, let's go GLP-1 aside. Let's just kind of set that off, to the, off the table for a little bit. Is there anywhere else in biotech that's promising besides GLP-1? Yeah, well, I th I'm kind of excited about Alzheimer's disease. I mean, we, we don't talk about it that much relative to, you know, the weight loss drugs, but you've got Biogen out there in the, an approved drug. You've got Eli Lilly coming online later this year. I mean, this is another massive category. I think it's been kind of plagued by various fits and starts along the way, um, you know, in terms of market development and data. But now that we're going to have two major players kind of creating this market over the next few years, this is one that I would kind of look at and say, you know, we're not really paying for it. We know there are an abundance of patients out there and we're going to have drugs that treat these, albeit probably not perfect yet, but we're kind of in the first inning of what I think could be an interesting Alzheimer's disease build out. It just is not as interesting for investors right now, you know, versus the GLPs. All right. Jared Holtz, it's always great to get your thoughts. Come and see us again soon, sir. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it.